speed doesn't come easy on water. Racing over the waters at 120 miles per hour takes more thrust than 200 miles per hour on land. For water packs a resistance far greater than that of air. The secret? Get the boat up. Up out of the water so it can fly over the top, but not too far up because even the best boats make very poor airplanes. OPC Tunnel Boats, powered by a single high-performance two-liter outboard. They get their name from their unique tunnel-shaped hull, which lifts the boat up out of the water, allowing it to run on a cushion of air. These are the Formula One machines of boat racing, capable of outstanding performance. From a standing start, they reach 100 miles per hour in just five seconds, hitting a top speed of 140. But most amazing is their extraordinary ability to turn. Turn harder than just about any other vehicle in the world. By dropping one side of the tunnel or sponson into the water, they in effect corner as if on rails, producing side forces of over four Gs of centrifugal force. The fastest tunnel boat racers explain their secrets. It's really exhilarating. Basically, you're going into a turn as fast as you could possibly go, 130 or 140 miles an hour. When you come into the turn, you're down trimming the boat, you're pressing a button on the wheel, the boat sets, which means the tunnel, or uh, the sponson on, sets into the water, and you're able to turn like you're on rails. Uh, basically, going into it, you are going over four Gs, and it just basically feels like a roller coaster going into a turn. It's a huge roll. We'd probably trim the boat on a straightaway maybe 10 times on one straightaway. When you approach the turn, the boat will be running in about a neutral trim position. That's a 90 degree angle to the sponson, bottom of the sponson on the boat. When you get in or get close to the turn, the motor will be tucked under and give you a less than 90 degree angle at the bottom of the boat. When you proceed through the turn, you'll increase the angle, trimming it out and raising the bow and increasing past 90 degree angle. You know, you're out there and you're in a, in a boat capable of incredible speeds, incredible turning ability, incredible acceleration. Um, to be, just to drive one of these boats, you have to be aggressive, somewhat confident, uh, I should say very confident in, in your driving, uh, especially to go out there and, and run toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with a lot of these guys. To fully appreciate the cornering ability of these machines, consider the fact that they pull more G-forces on a turn than does an Indy car. If you lose it into a turn uh, compared to a car, a car's gonna spin out, a boat's basically gonna barrel roll and if you go into a turn that hard. Um, but really, boats, there isn't nothing like a Formula One boat that compares to it. The engines powering these little rocket ships start off as stock outboards. Well, uh, what we have is a, it's a Formula One tunnel boat, and um, we're running a, a Mercury V6 outboard. It's, uh, it's the new 2.5 uh, two two liter mer uh, motor that Mercury's putting out, and it's uh, called the S3000. Um, they're, uh, they're amazing boats, they accelerate and they turn uh, incredibly hard and it's a very competitive series. Um, the speeds and the way they handle the turns and the, the way you fly the boat really fascinated me and that was the reason why I got involved with the Formula One tunnel boats. Uh, it's a definite rush, you know. It, it, it's, uh, the start is the most uh, probably impressive thing. Uh, Le Mans starts uh, similar to a motocross uh, start. Uh, you're, you're all in one line, they drop the flag and, you, and you, you're heading to the first turn with 20, 20 other guys and going into that turn, 20 of you at one time and that's the, the main thing about it, is trying to get to that turn first but at the same time you want to make it through the turn. Well it has a lot to do with the start position and how you're running and everything but if you have a good qualifying position and you're able to start near the front of the pack, um, the longer the lead you establish quick, the better off you're going to be in a long 30 or 40 or 50 lap race. Uh, we put on a good show at the start because, you'd, like you said, you have 20 boats at a dead stop going to the first pan all together and everyone wants to get there first. 
Yeah, you definitely have to run on the ragged edge with these boats in order to be competitive. There's so many fast guys out here. Um, you know, the top probably five or eight drivers are all within tenths of a second, you know. Um, in order to be competitive, you have to run on the ragged edge, but you have to run clean, too. One mistake, and, and that'll end the race for you. But there is definitely a aggressive category and a conservative category. There's a few guys out there that, that are somewhat conservative, um, and if they go out and finish top ten, they're happy. The more aggressive drivers... Uh are able to build more speed in the straightaway because the boat is much looser. Uh, what I mean is it's higher out of the water the, from the front of the sponson to the rear of the sponson. The less of the sponson it touches, the less friction there is, the more speed you're able to build in the straightaway. Uh, if you get the balance point tipped in the wrong direction, then you're gonna get in the air and it's gonna be really nasty. The blowover. The tunnel boat driver's worst nightmare. One second, he's trimming the boat up. Then too much. He catches air underneath and he's out of control. Everybody's trying to be right on that edge. And if you get a little bit too far over the edge, obviously you're getting too much air under the boat and it's going to blow over. That's what we all try to do is keep it right on the edge. Um, a lot of times at the speeds we're running at the end of the straightaways, it's hard to feel if you're going to, uh, if it's going to blow over, it's usually going to go. But you definitely want to be on the edge most of the time. What happens is when you get too high, everything gets quiet. And that's how you know it's pretty much over. And what happens after that? You see sky and then water. <laughs>